Okay, so while I'm taking a quick little vape break here and a, and a coffee break, um, I want to uh, pose to my viewers who were uh, uh, astute enough to, you know, uh, pick up the fact that, you know, I just totally uh, screwed the pooch on that, that uh, lower radiator hose video. Um, and I'm not bagging on you guys. It was bad. I, I take full responsibility for making a crappy video. But uh, <laughs> uh, I threw a little challenge in this one for you guys. Okay. Up until this point, there was a glaring flaw. And I don't know what to say to, so I don't want to give it away because I want it to be a challenge for you guys. But if you look at the video up until now, uh, you will see something that is not, uh, is, is not correct at all. And I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's not exactly something that Ray Charles would see, so you have to look carefully, but uh, it is definitely, uh, it is definitely uh, something very wrong. And I will, uh, uh, in a later video, I will post the, uh, uh, post the solution and what it was so uh, it was just a crazy idea I had and I thought that uh, uh, I'd throw it out there and it was something that was easy for me to do and set up so uh, you have to look real closely at the video uh, before this point and uh, to see it and uh, once it's uh, uh, you know I, I will give you the one hint that from this point out it is not it's not there uh, it's before this point in the video, so uh, be a good challenge. Let everybody look at it and see what you think, and uh, post it in the comments, um, uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see who gets it and uh, who gets it right. I don't know that I have any like prize that I could offer for for that. I mean, I don't know. I think of something, but uh, uh, we'll see who uh, see who gets it right. Who gets it right first? And, uh, you know, if I got some kind of swag from the workshop or something I can send you, maybe we'll do that. Who knows? But uh, um, I think it'll be a challenge. I mean, if you guys were clever enough to pick up that, you know, I just, like, left out half the process on how to change our radios, <laughs> then you'll be able to pick this up. So have fun, and uh, I hope you get it. And, uh, again, post it in the comments. So we'll get back to the video now. All right, so now we will. Uh, I've gone ahead and and clocked my uh, rubber boot where it needs to be to line everything up properly. Now we'll go ahead and again, like I said, we don't want to bolt anything in here yet. Just keep everything loose, and we'll put our top of our air box on. You want to be mindful of this one clip here on the top side. The rest of them go from the bottom up <clears throat> get it out of the way. And we we'll just insert it onto our air boot here. And yeah, we'll line everything up nice and pretty. You can use that one clip on the top of the box to get yourself started. And then come around to the other side with those two. Lock them down. Help to have long skinny fingers. Once all that's done, you can fish out your connector for the for the mass airflow sensor. Let's reconnect that. And then once we're done with that, then we can snug our boot back up. BMWs are very funny about where they get their air from, and every bit of it's got to come through that mass airflow sensor, or you will have a drivability problem. So, it always helps to mark the orientation of these boots to uh, make it easier for you to put them back together. saves you having to figure it out. 
And then you hook these two little vacuum lines back up here on the air boot. And we've got double check everything. You got the boot to the or the connector to the air adjuster valve. You got your mass airflow sensor. You got all that. And while this is still loose, okay, then we can install this little bit right here. two 10 millimeter bolts back in here to hold the air box in place. And I said I always like their old extension so I can just run them down by hand first until they snug up. And as I said, it doesn't need a whole lot of torque. That's that. So now let's go inside the car and talk to the computer. Okay. Now we're inside the car here. We're scanning our computer. And we'll look at the look at all the codes it's given. And you'll see that you got misfires on all the different cylinders. You've got fuel trim, bank one and two, uh, out of range, all right? And that's essentially because of that huge vacuum leak it was having. Because it's trying to trim the fuel based on the amount of air that's getting into the engine. And the whole concept of that variable intake system is uh, to allow the engine to get the right amount of air. So it expects to get less air at... Uh, lower RPM so it adjusts the fuel accordingly but if the valve is open and you have a short intake runner then it gets too much air and it runs lean so and so here's another fuel trim bank one control limit uh, tank leak diagnosis that's the gas cap and uh, so now what we're going to do here is we're going now that we have it fixed we're going to go ahead and clear all those codes. And we'll read to verify. No fault codes detected. And then we will start this puppy up. And we'll see how it runs. Okay. So that takes care of this bit. Uh, the, uh, we've got it running good now and by replacing that, uh, that air control valve you can hear it running nice and smooth no misfires uh, none of the codes have come back uh, there's some follow on maintenance we're going to do to the car for we're going to change the oil and uh, I think we're going to put a water pump in it too while I have it but, uh, uh, but her main concern was how it was running because before the car was practically undrivable, you know, it would run fine for a second and then all of a sudden it would just boom and stall out on her and all that. And that was that valve opening and closing. And kind of, uh, to my more mechanically inclined brethren, it would be kind of like the car running along nice and, nice and easy and then you pull the vacuum line off the brake booster, causing a humongous vacuum leak and then the car just kind of dies out because basically the same principle of what was happening here with this uh, with this air controller so now that that's all nice and spiffy and the car is running real good and wonderful uh, she'll uh, she'll be happy to hear that and uh, you know we're going to move on to the next project we're still waiting on the parts to get here for the water pump and things like that uh, we'll do a separate video for that so uh, stay tuned keep watching and uh, like I said look for that little uh, a little challenge I put in there for you, um, you know, uh, in the first part of the video there, something was not, not correct, and, uh, uh, 
it's, uh, uh, I don't want to get too many hints to make it too easy, but uh, it's there, you'll see it, and uh, I'll be interested to see, uh, to see how quick you guys find it, so. Okay, so, let's take it for a little test drive here. Our car's squawking, saying that it's 37 degrees out, so we need to be careful of any potential icing coming up. But the car's performing very well. There's no uh, it's running a whole lot better than it did when she brought it here. And if we lay down on it, we'll see that that valve opens up. Everything smooth transition, all that, we're good. So, so yeah, it's running out really nice. Of course, that's the thing about these BMWs. You know, they're just, you know, uh, just a cut above in the feel and how they drive and uh, how they feel when you drive them, actually. They, uh, you know, if you were to drive this car and then, you know, for example, drive my Cadillac CTS uh, or, you know, run of the mill Chevy Malibu or whatever, you know, they're both good cars in their own right but the BMW or German cars in general they just feel different they feel more solid uh, it's hard to explain what that feeling is I think uh, Volkswagen called it Farfik Nugent or something but it's uh, uh, you know driving a German car or a European car like this just you know it's a whole different experience a whole different feel and that's why people like them, despite their shortcomings of being so expensive to maintain and, you know, in some cases problematic. They're not any different from American cars in that they have their, you know, idiosyncrasies and common failure points and things like that. You know, for example, on this car, that, uh, that air diverter valve is a, is a very common failure item on these cars, as is that rubber boot on the intake. And, um, you know, it's just over here, it's a whole lot more expensive to fix because, you know, parts are coming from Germany or Europe. But, uh, you know, to, for those who, you know, appreciate the feel of a fine driving automobile, you know, even if you wouldn't ever care to own one, the, uh, the BMW is a... Uh, or Mercedes, or, you know, any of those you know, German cars are, uh, uh, they're a pleasure to drive, really. The handling and the stability, they just, they just feel so much more solid, so much more planted when you're driving them. So, but anyway, let's go put this thing back for the time being, and we'll wait for the water pump and all that stuff to get here, and, and uh, we'll go on from there. So, stay tuned.